dead, and he's got Kevlar, I would expect him to go towards the B bomb site with that, trying to shut down any, any rushes, perhaps, in that direction. But we'll see where he is going. Yeah, he's heading, heading towards B. CLG putting everyone top mid. Numbers game versus the range of Vega. Uh, JR, rather. Yeah, it's such a nice position to play from, especially if you, if you don't get dinks very early, and that's uh, something he will avoid for the time being. Doesn't get any kills, though. So we'll see CLG making their way up pretty, in a pretty clear fashion onto that window area. Nice pick off there from Sabrosa, making his way forward. A great position for his team to sort of pivot away from. Another head, well, actually just straight up kill found onto Kishanda. Now, the rest of CLG can bring themselves onto that A-bomb site, and they're just getting all the kills along the way here. This is looking great for them. Look at the bomb, though. The bomb is stuck in connector on the stairs, and they don't have the range advantage, these CLG players, so they've got big problems. Hutchie's still full health at the moment. Two kills to his name. That smoke goes down, and they can't get the bomb. Running distraction, now Mir comes in for a sneaky kill, leaving Cutler alone. He's got a USP, though, and he has a minute on the clock, so not the worst thing in the world. Mir needs to make sure he doesn't overextend. They have advantages. Charging through his Cutler. He's got the bomb, but he can't get the kill onto Hutchie. Is Hutchie going to give it up? Cutler's got to be scary for the trade fragger as well. There we go. There's Hutchie down. One versus one now. Mir coming in for a crash pick. 25 HP left on Cutler, but he's good enough for the last kill. Quickly going to get that bomb plant money as well. That $300 bonus. That is a man who's focused. Yeah, ballsy stuff from Cutler right at the end. We see that he wanted to go for the extended peaks, just re-peaking a couple of times. He had the, the guaranteed bomb plant. Um, situation avail available to him, but he wanted to take the fight and he was successful. His confidence did indeed pay off in that scenario. CLG with the 1-0 and a couple of MAC-10s as well. So CLG, they, ha they have had this lineup for a while. And as mentioned, you know, Chris is back on the AWP. It was Cutler for quite some time. And Cutler did surprise me, at least, with his proficiency in that role. But I'm curious to see how the anti force by looks. Something in the past that uh, CLG were not known for being particularly good at, but let's see if they have uh, developed something new. What I like also is a force by with a plan. Vega Squadron's plan is three people on a short position. Not working out for them so far, but it's always good to see a team with direction. And again, having that raid boss on the uh, pistol ramp, quite curious as well. Not something you see every day. Mere hiding in the smoke for the time being. Should hear the reload though. But uh, either way, we're down to the two versus two. The bomb's still left at top mid at the moment. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting one. It started off pretty well for CLG here, but they've made a, a couple overextensions and just some good work with those CZs from Vega Squadron towards the middle area has seemingly caught CLG in a poor position. Guns have been collected as well. AK on Hut G, Mac 10 on Mir, Mir, and this is looking problematic. Although, Hayes will be able to take down Hut G, leaving just the Mac 10 onto Mir. He will be making his way towards A through T spawn, and it doesn't appear that CLG know where he is, and they're going to go for the A plant. This could be dangerous. He is walking at the moment. No one's looking for his position. This could be the round. But he does have a Mac 10. He's playing at some awkward ranges. If he can close some distance here, always oh, managed to find the blind spot. He knows where both players are. There's Hayes, and he knows he saw Cutler's head close range. He's got the moving accuracy, but the AK will prevail. So CLG just about hold on to that round. Of course, we'll have the uh, eco round coming in for Vega Squadron now with the money they have. And JR maybe looking to pick up an AWP in the buy round with the money he's got, though uh, that $200 on the flashbang may mean he doesn't have a helmet. With the damage they did, though, perhaps they can expect more AKs to be coming out and helmet won't be required. We'll see what the buy come looks like in the buy round, but for now, it is the uh, Honest Eco from Vega Squadron. Hachi with a high explosive grenades. That's about all they have to shout about at the moment. They could use that pot flash over connector, for example, to triple peak mid, if that's what they want to do. There's no ramp play. In fact, A's been more or less abandoned by the uh, CT side. And there's that flash, from the short rather, so it will be a uh, triple peak coming out. Spray's good, and the round has been neutered. Almost wanted to just see Vega Squadron waiting longer there, because CLG did, uh, they did look a little bit... Didn't look super smooth in the previous uh, anti-force buy round that we saw from them. They kind of got stuck in connector a little bit. It looked good for a while, but definitely it's not as smooth as it could be. So maybe if uh, Vega Squadron had forced them to play a little bit more slowly, then they could have uh, exploited something there. But I love the pop flash play with the, the quad face in mid. Didn't work out as well for them as they maybe would have hoped, but for CLG at least, they are going to claim a clean round. A 3-0 uh, right now on the scoreboard, and very importantly, only losing one player after losing way too many in the anti-force buy is going to get them back in favor a little bit on the economy, but now it's time 
for the AWP onto Vega Squadron. And I can't wait to see how they use this. Indeed, JR is AWP, no armor. So uh, it's cool to see that he knew he could afford himself uh, just a flashbang to have that eco run play into the middle area. So uh, they're keeping their focus on their money. Haven't got many rounds, but uh, you can see they're, they've got their head screwed on, the Vega Squadron side. This is the big challenge for uh, CT AWPers always facing smokes in the middle area. How do you keep your usefulness for the side? Interesting, we see Kusta going for the plays towards B. JDM used to, used to do the same when he was on the CLG side. We see it from Alu as well. These Orpers like to get their picks towards B when they uh, have good spawns. But for now, they'll be smoked off. No early picks like we saw earlier on a Mirage here at the major qualifier. Three people in A for Vegas Vega Squadron at the moment. Kusta with a pop flash from his teammate. Lovely stuff. We've seen an increased uh, attention to detail from CLG since they've had their coach. Oh, if only he knew. Just do it. But there you go, we got a first kill there from Cutler. Do you get, oh, some trades coming in from Hutchie and GL and Kishanda also popping through the smoke, just capitalizing on the distraction, getting himself a kill as well. That's all of a sudden three players dead almost. Well, well, very in, in a very quick uh, passage of time there. So now CLG, they're forced into a desperate spot. 40 seconds left, and they've got to just pick a bomb site and go. And they are going to choose the A bomb site, and that will not be easy to break. There's three players there. Vega Squadron don't have grenades, though, but at the same time, they do have. Oh, well, actually, they're rotating. Uh, they're opera actually towards B here for a 2 2. So this uh, delay for the push is actually going to work out for CLG pretty well. I wonder if Chopper can hear Kusta's scope from the angle he's in. I don't know, but Ethan's gone down. Leaving Kusta alone. Misses his first shot. Chopper nowhere really to hide. Nine seconds though, so uh, Vega, don't, no, don't, they don't need to face at this point. They'll get the pick off anyway. Important for them not to lose any uh, other players, this being the first buy round that they've won. First round that they've won in general, so. They don't pick up the uh, second sniper, just sticking with one onto JR for the time being. And CLG again, uh, there was big damage done to their economy early, but they have a buy for this round. At least three AKs, Cutler and Ethan on Tech 9s. I don't see any rifles on the floor. So it may be a three rifle Tech 2, Tech 9 play for them. Three people going towards A early. So this might be a fast one through to Connector. It is indeed, a very fast one. Split onto that A bomb site. We have a push into Palace in the meanwhile from Chopper. Kishan is alone there. The push through the flames is actually get, actually going to be a sacrificial situation there because he sacrificed himself for the frag. Had to see if that pays off for his team. They have gained some uh, significant ground here onto the A bomb site, so one would say that it has paid off in dividends. But Chopper coming out here with the UMP, unsure where the rest of the players are, but does get himself a one for one. It might just be good enough now as Vegas Rodden have a man advantage going into the retake. Yeah, they've got Mir coming in from T Slope as well, taking Hayes down on the toll booth. Easy. Now he can run distraction and allow Ethan to. Oh, he's only got Tech 9 as well. But there it is. JR trades. That uh, that continuation spray with the, with the UMP was interesting because they had a four versus two situation. So I don't know uh, if that was required because it seems to be a guess. The bomb wasn't planted anywhere close. But then maybe it depends on what sounds he has equipped at the moment. We know there is that sound update in the game, which um, I haven't had a chance to try myself, but uh, definitely has mixed results for the time being. And I think it's enabled by default, so you need to go in and change it back to classic if you do not favor it at the moment. Hopefully it continues to be worked on. CLG on the eco early, and indeed that's that, uh, that damage from Vega Squadron early on paying off. So now we have just some pistols for CLG as they make their way towards A. And we have passive positioning from Vegas Squadron as far as the A-bomb side is concerned. It's a bit of, it's a retake setup. We've got JR just on the AWP at range. And a bit push there for Vegas Squadron. Does it give them the info they need? Perhaps not in time because here is the push. It's on the bomb site. It's a free plant. And JR's not confident to try to play with his AWP alone in a top booth position. It's very easy to rush him down. However, the T's are going to push the smokes here and try to find the frags themselves. It's not going so well for them to begin with. 
They've picked up a rifle though, and that can cut off a lot of players. You see the positions of these uh, CTs jumping into short, very uh, from short rather. Very, very smart stuff by Mir. That's going to leave Ethan on his own. Where is Ethan? You can see him in the shadow position. And there he goes. Just one kill. Vega Squadron don't care about the uh, bomb being planted. Again, they're looking to play maximum ranges against uh, CLG. Had a good eye on the T economy. So they limited their risk, and on they go. Three to three. And I really love how JR, more or less, again, as you say, kind of the, the, they're happy to give up the plants. So instead of trying to take some challenges with his AWP there, where basically because they got Tech 9s, every time you fire a shot, they gain so much ground because they're running and shooting. And so maybe if you're absolutely on top of your game, you get two kills there. So you end up losing a lot of money um, as you're pretty, pretty much guaranteed to die if they rush you. So I really like the conservative play there. Shows a lot of good understanding of the game. But now we're back on the buy for CLG, and what's we'll if their approach differs here? It does kind of feel as though at the beginning here they may be thinking about just going for that A split. They've got three players towards slope. Kusta trying to lead the way with the AWP towards top mid as well. Let's see if it works out for them. There are four smokes in A at the moment, then that one smoke in mid. Mir has gone for a flank of B already though, so Vega can stack the A bomb site. They've already got three people in and around it, and CLG haven't gone for execute yet. By the time the smokes disappear, they'll probably start. Kishana goes down very early though. Chopper trades for the time being, not expecting a second play, but now it's Bedlam on the A site, forcing JR to move back. He's only got 15 HP, and CLG have a lot of advantages now. Lovely shot there by Kusta. Yeah, JR not being able to get a pick off there really made a big difference, I think, early on. But Mir comes in from the back there. Two quick kills coming in from him. A third maybe up for grabs there as Kusta fades away down onto the stairs, allowing JR now some opportunity to move forwards with the orb. And this, if he gets this shot, if he can find Kusta or Ethan, this would be a massive, massive kill for Vega Squadron. He can defuse it, but he hasn't got the kit. He needs Mir to run over, but Mir's facing with the defuse kit. Why? The bombs in the smoke. And that's going to be that. Both very low health. And the round will be finished off by CLG. And it, I, I mean, generally we saw... I mean, you don't need, normally see splits work off in this in this manner, where all the smokes are thrown, you know, well in advance towards A, and you have two players kind of just creeping into mid without having previously cleared it. So interesting round from CLG, but it does work out for them. I'm pretty sure Vega Squadron had an angle to defuse that bomb behind the box. And JR can hold the angle in the meantime on connector, but Mir runs in front of the smoke instead of running to defuse the bomb. So I think that they, they threw away opportunity. I mean, he's heavily tagged as well. Like he, ha I think he should make the play anyway to defuse the bomb and have JR hold the angle. That seems a superior thing to me. So far, so good in this round for Mir. That's two players down now for CLG. That's going to cause their lurker towards A, Ethan, to rotate and collect the bomb at top mid. B is heavily stacked by uh, Vega Squadron at the moment. Got three plays over there. And indeed, that's where CLG are for the time being. Minute 20, though. They've got time to play with, but they don't have personnel. They don't have the map control. So it may be B after all. B is the choice. Leading the way is the Broza, but JR's on the angle. Sees the gun. Plenty of warning for him. That's one frag. Can anything else be done here? They can't even get out of the apartments just yet. Hutchie's there as well, putting in the performance. A single kill. It's not a great performance, but it's enough here to make life pretty much impossible for Ethan as he falls out of the apartments and into the clutches of Mayor. So, four to four, and uh, Vega Squadron are looking pretty good right now uh, overall against CLG. CLG have also not in a lot of these buy rounds really shown a solid default, a solid take of mid control and, and the, the, the follow-up kind of phase two plan, the development of that mid control just yet to to make plays. Yeah, bearing in mind CLG won the pistol round, this is a good start for Vega Squadron, pistol round aside. Deagle's coming out for CLG, Ethan on full grenades and uh, he's throwing himself some full armor as well. He's still got 2100 in the bank though, so he hasn't uh, spent all his cash. And that's, this is a round reset for CLG, which means their loss bonus is going to suck. So speaking of mid control, they have it at the moment, but they don't have the range of uh, the weapons beside Deagles. Looking for the one shots. Nice angles being held there, but uh, nobody is serving themselves up on the Vega Squadron side. Three people around the A bomb site, keeping firm control of connector for the time being. And there's JR, the first Deagle kill is here. Bernie's back up, he's gonna run out of bullets. There we go, Cut the takes him down. 
Shanda trades, but can he hold on to this map? Oh, that's an important kill from Sabrosa. That actually allows them to have a strong chance to potentially win the round, especially as another gun can be collected and they all start to barrel into that a the A bomb site. Although that said, as it was posturing, they're posturing as if they were, but they are holding things out now, just trying to see if they can catch a rotation. So far, nothing going for COG as far as capitalizing upon a quick rotation, but Hot G and Chopper are slowly making their way forward to the A bomb site, and the bomb's only just now being planted. Chopper needs to get something going here as he comes in, spots one player, gives his position away, and that could be a problem. Kusta running distraction, they've got the man advantage. So the question is, where are the trade fraggers for the CLG side? No one's on T-Ramp, but where's the last player? Not making his presence known just yet, sees Kusta Shadow, but he can't kill him. Kusta playing the cat and mouse game very, very well. Now goes Hachi in the meantime, running out of bullets again to Chopper. There's one, nice headshot, but where's the third player? It's the big rotation into Connector. And that's going to leave Chopper guessing as to where Hayes might be. Unlikely round stolen by CLG. AWP made a happy part to play. Putting CLG back in the lead once again. Yeah, but as you said, it is, all things considered, a fairly good start for Vega Squadron. It does suck for them that uh, in the rounds that they won, or in the rounds that they were able to string together, they weren't really able to build much money. So it's just straight away save a save situation. And uh, CLG, they, you know, they're going to be able to build loads of money off of this if they play it right, giving them a bit more security. Ooh, Chopper's trying to find a way in. He might just do that. Actually, it's uh, one kill coming in from a combined effort of Mira and Chopper, but you can see that the CLG machine, the engine, is powering its way onto the A bomb site. JR in the ninja nice. position. Oh man, could get two, but no. Just uh, sweeping around, finds a quick finishing shot. And the rest should be a formality, and indeed it will be as CLG goes 6-4. to four. But losing two members is actually good work for Vega Squadron there to keep the economy somewhat honest of, Z of CLG. Vega back on the bike. Grenades will be limited. JR is AWP, no armor. Seven kills for his team at the moment. We'll see if it continues. CLG obviously will be far better equipped. Hazed, uh, for some reason, Hazed buys his own AK, and he has no money for grenades. Sub Rosa or Kusta could have dropped him weapons if you can see the money there. So uh, that's bad economy management from CLG. And that kind of leaves them unnecessarily short on grenades for the team. Let's see how it works. Bigger squadron with a bunch of uh, flashbangs for the most part. Hayes having a cheeky peek. CSCT over towards Triple. He needs help now, but he won't get it. Kusta takes him down. Now, this is really interesting because there's no grenades here for, for Vegas Squad, and even in this very early state of the round, there's just no grenades for them to really help themselves go for the retake with. So, all Kusta spots himself a hand, no less. I think that pixel of a hand, that's enough for Kusta to take the frag down. May will be able to take down Strabrosa to get the retake effort closer to the A-bomb site, but it's still going to be a labored and arduous affair as JR comes over the top here with the cover of the flashbangs, but they only cover for so long. Ethan capitalizes as JR is in the open, and then they fall like dominoes after that. Vega Squadron conceding another round to CLG. CLG 7-4 to four now, and another save is in store for the Vega Squadron. Oh, man, that's a, that's a really confident decisive shot there from Kusta. I love it. The good start may not lead to a good finish in this half for Vega Squadron in the doldrums now. It's three rounds lost in a row. And it's an opportunity for CLG to build some cash as well as build a lead on this side. Will it be a fast play into the eight? Looks like they realize that uh, Vega Squadron are on the eco. Ethan going to charge straight into Sandwich. Oh, they haven't checked the shadow properly. The trades will be there, and now the round should be uh, more or less over. That gun isn't retrievable. Hayes holding down rotation, and now Mir remains with a deagle. That's going to be a quick round. CLG with double the score of Vegas Squadron in the first half. Yeah, nice quick one, and then back into the bite. And with the bite, I wonder if Vegas Squadron will start to experiment a little bit. But there were some rounds previously where they did try to get aggressive, actually. We saw a, a an aggression on B apartments and an aggression on, on uh, the palace, but they never quite got so lucky as to find anybody there to get an early frag advantage. They instead just only got the early information advantage, which didn't always actually end up helping them in the past rounds, but 
Oh, is Jair going to go for the quick palace play? No, just uh, smoking it off very, very quickly indeed. It's actually Mei who's going to go for a play into the underpass there, as we can see. Kishana, meanwhile, able to take a frag in top mid, so good presence here from Vega Squadron. Popflus actually catches Sabrosa. I think maybe an elbow is spotted by Mei. He's looking for the kill. The snap comes in, and Sabrosa is down. Great start for Vega Squadron. I like how Mei just says, exits immediately. Not really, not looking for more kills in that area. One, and he will get out of there. Gives himself and his team a massive advantage, but two very quick frags here for T-Side. One traded back, so there's still a man advantage for Vega, but they've lost a lot of map control, especially towards B. I think Mei has been able to actually hear everything going on towards B here. So at least the information for the rotations in, in quickly. But the bomb will go down. Oh, Kusta's going to be able to hear Mei moving around the apartments. He's going to get himself out of what otherwise was a very dodgy situation. But perhaps it doesn't pay off because he moves into the crosshairs of JR. Mei now still pressuring from the apartments. 6 HP is what Cutler has to work with as he looks for the kill. But he will not be successful. And instead, another round going in the way of Vega Squadron. Not doing too... I mean, again, not really doing all that badly considering the way things have been going. They lost the pistol and all that. It's uh, it's a decent showing against a, a team that on paper, I think a lot of people would say has a heavy edge. Mir's up there with 17 frags at the moment. See uh, Hachi just emerged too quickly, unfortunately. When Orpas are holding their angles, they'll often fire when blind. See it towards long dust too as well. Two rounds left in the first half. Vega squadron trail by three. Both teams on the bye. Kashanda on the MP9, not commonly found cl up close on T ramp on A. One would imagine he'll head in that direction. And again, CLG seem to be favouring the A site. They've got Ethan Hayes and Cutler and Kusta all heading there. So Brosa top mid, so it may be a fast one here from CLG. Yeah, the uh, player in Palace Kashanda might be up to some shenanigans, but I don't think that with the MP9 is all that much he's going to be able to do. It should a big push come in. He won't have the ranges to really play with that weapon effectively, and his position will be almost completely circumvented. We'll have to see how it does turn out, but the CRG that are looking for their initial entries here, we have a lot of grenades going, and you can see an actual uh, team Molotov going to Palace, so they're aware that the push could have occurred there. So good cognizance coming in from CLG as they make the efforts to coordination into that A-bomb side. But strong presence very closely, and indeed, Kishanda gets himself some action with that MP9. Lovely timing that allows Mir to pick up two kills in a distraction, leaving Sub Rosa alone. Spawn planted for him, but there comes JR, there's a smoke as well. Hachi going for the crouch stand defuse in case it is required, but it won't be. Just two rounds between these uh, two teams now. Let's see what kind of money CLG have going into the last round. They've got enough to go for the buy. They've got loads of players above, or around $6,000. You see Ethan, oh sorry, Cutler rather, completely distracted by Kishanda's MP9 shenanigans coming out of Palace. Will Kusa drop for Cut uh, Hayes this time so he can have some nades? No, he's going to get Norp, so no. Denied. <laughs> That's okay though, he's actually going to go Galil, get nades. Even if he, if he went AK na uh, with no nades, I think it's actually okay as well in a lot of spots. This is the rest of his teammates have a lot of nades, so it's not, not too much of an issue. And CLG, they have three players towards the slope at the moment. It's, it's kind of a setup that can easily catch aggression as well. But the, we saw this before. They ran this, the three-man push into A. Last time, they used it as a split onto the A-bomb site. This time, it almost feels as though they want to fake. But the bomb is just so far away and, and not really in a position to really react to what happens on the A-bomb site. That uh, it does look quite interesting. Now, it does seem that we have a trade on our hands as the rest of CLG goes back towards B. JR made his way towards top mid, so he knows no one's there. He's making his way now towards short. So there's three players for Vega Squadron on B, but uh, CLG in two minds, it seems. Moving back towards mid. Now, can JR get out of this corner in time? Just before the grenade goes down. No lurker for CLG towards either site, so what is their play? Seems like Brazil will be heading towards the CPL position, but JR already has an angle. So it might be a B split from uh, CLG. Cutler is on short with the bomb. So, so far, I mean, CLG have been pretty good at moving it as a unit and... Oh, <laughs> well... In the face. That's pretty nice. JR decisively taking down Sabrosa. CLG losing a man. Numbers being thinned out, but they they strike back in Gusta. 
One more player though, Hachi can make the difference. Time is a problem here. If he just gets a delay in, this could be really problematic, but the trade comes in despite the dink there. Cutler, by the skin of his teeth, able to get the bomb planted. Kishanda makes his way in, fast finish. Does he know where Kuster is? Kuster's on the angle. Kishanda picks up the kill, and that's going to be the last round of the first half, going to Vegas Squadron. It's a good recovery towards the end of the half from Vegas Squadron. The question is now, what do they have to offer us on the T side? And again, CLG, I doubt we'll have much information on the Vegas Squadron side. So uh, they uh, may be at the mercy of Vegas Squad Squadron's T side if they have if they have some tactics to offer us. First comes the pistol, however, a chance for one of these two teams to get off to a good start, get momentum in their favor. CLG strung some nice rounds together, but again, it's just a one round lead moving into the second pistol. Now, Vega Squadron, again, we haven't seen too much from them. So a pistol round is where you can get a little bit crazy if you want. Some teams do like, like to keep it like fairly vanilla. I mean, we won't see any grenades on them. And a trend that we have been seeing recently is a lot of teams are just buying up on, on the T side, a couple have oh have two guys basically whose job it is to throw utility. So basically guaranteed that the bomb goes down. So even if you lose the round, you can guarantee that you close down the, the ranges of the USP advantages and you get the bomb planted at the very least. So you can always keep pressure up. And you can see just the split onto the A bomb site here. Very uh, standard and vanilla stuff indeed. And it works out pretty well. Bomb's going to go down here as the engagements are being found. Oh, stuck in the vent. That's not good. Will the bomb even need to go down at this point? They're not planting the bomb just yet. It is uh, hiding. It's not to cover the bomb plant, so that's smart stuff. JR's just chilling out with the bomb. Yeah, I'm over here. No problem. Now they know where Sobrosa is. That bomb can get planted. Give everybody that plant. Bonus may not even be required. Very interesting stuff on both sides. Vega Squadron on the CT pistol. They have a CZ right boss towards B, which is always cool. CZ or a 5.7, nice against the B rush on, on a lot of maps, actually. And then here, just all Kevlar on the T side of Mirage, where you've got loads of ranges for these CTs. And they make it work, just pushing map control. They're not focusing on trying to plant a bomb. They're just focusing on pushing CTs away or eliminating them. Using the numbers game up close around that jungle position works to a treat. CLG force buying, apart from Kusto, by nothing at all. 1,800 in the bank for him. He'll be on the AWP straight away on the buy round. Yeah, there's really a real door stuck moment in the vent there. This is this actually looks kind of scary. Everybody from CLG are looking to just explode into middle. Well, it's like they are the ones that will be exploding as the AK fire and Mac 10s rain down upon them in mid. It's just Sabrosa left now with a CZ. Where is he going to find his action? Looks like he's going to find one by the vets. Spray not quite really panning out, and that's going to be a great deal of information as well, being the last guy alive. Vega Squadron, no. Okay, can plant safely here. We know exactly more or less where Sabrosa can possibly be with the amount of time that he's had to run away. And he's found a Mag 10. And now he's tagged. He is he's very dead, James. He is incredibly dead. I think he would, should have his CZ out at close range like this. Oh, nice pre fire, though. Oh, he's only got three bullets in the CZ. Fair enough. Still draws it out, though. But uh, he cannot stay alive. Good start for Vega Squadron. They know they're on the eco now. They're up against the eco, rather. JR continuing with the scout for this round. Always nice to see a scout. Kashanda opting for the uh, MAC-10, which is curious. He had f I think he had a clean... Yeah, he had a clean $5,000. So we opted for the MAC-10, so they'll have two MAC-10s and a Scout, as opposed to the AKs. But he knows there was a Force Buy, so it's interesting. They have two MAC-10s, so are they suggesting that if they have a perfect round, they're going to start with two MAC-10s in the next round? That is interesting to me. Unless he's going to drop a, an AWP, perhaps, for JR, if he has the money for it in the next round. That might be the case. That might be the play. Anyway, CLG getting wiped out one by one as they should in a round like this. It's quite interesting actually, because <laughs> Vegas Squadron, they have, I mean, they were able to win this uh, second pistol. They've got that uh, that good start or decent start going for themselves. It would actually be quite amazing if they were able to take down CLG, just just because it's nice to because see. Because of name value? It, no, it's just, yeah, it's just cool. It's just be funny to see. I don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't know what it would mean in fairness. It would mean that Thorin's an excellent analyst because he, I think he predicted that, and I think he said because it'd be funny. So and I, I agree. Oh, I agree. Weird. But I mean, they've been playing pretty well, so they're you know, not uh, making light of the situation in that sense. 
from Vega Squadron's perspective. Uh, but now they go into what is more of a true truer test, and that is how you play your T Sodom Mirage. And they'll be up against you know CLG with a dedicated AWPA in Custa. And I'm curious whether CLG, you know, as a team that's feeling like with with the better team, with the better players, whether they're trying to play a very tight fundamental game and not really take too many risks, which is how you should really play against people that you think are worse than you, whether they're going to go for you know crazy aggressions very early. Ethan starting off with a smoke around connector. If it was a bit higher, it would be more advantageous for him. Mir just going for a cheeky peek straight through the smoke here. It's an early advantage for CLG. Again, bearing in mind CLG for sport, they're not going to have that much in the name of utility. So uh, they may want to try and exhaust it early. I think that's for the CPL window. Yes. With similar angle, you can also uh, smoke shortly. Rotation. So, Hachi, every every third bullet in that spray will fire a tracer. Subraiser can just punish a tracer. That's a two-man advantage now for CLG. Not the start Vega Squadron we're hoping for. No, it's going to be quite tough for Ethan if they push connected together. But actually, it's just one man there. Will Ethan go for it? The pop flash did go in. There is. He comes in from Kashanda first, but he's quicker to the trigger in the end. Now, Kista, he is going to be the anchor here with his AWP in a retake position. There is actually no smoke for this, which really gives a lot of favor to CLG in holding this round. Nice flashbang that forces Kista off the angle just to allow them to get a bit closer. Now, Kista's going to get less opportunities to stop this bomb from going down. Maybe even none. Has to make the wall bang happen here, but he's on the wrong angle for that. And now it's two versus three. So that one flashbang did the world of good for the Vega squadron side. And now Kusta has to go aggressive. He's got his teammate, but oh, never mind. He's been taken down. So it's Kusta versus three. And he risks giving up the AWP to his opponent as well. Very difficult situation. Do Vega squadron want to collect it on the T side? That's the question. Indeed, they do. So that's quite a recovery from Vega squadron. There's a horrible start to that round. I was thinking, like, they're just going to give a round to CLG for free the way things were going there. But indeed, that is uh, not the way CLG want to lose the round. You have to wonder about the composure on the side when they have such strong advantages at the start there. Three round leads for Vega Squadron. CLG on the eco now. Maybe feeling like this game might be slipping away from them. Two high explosives on the CLG team. Other than that, pistols here and there. They've got the CZ though. Can always be dangerous. Vega Squadron Will they be moving players towards mid? Oh no, they're focusing on the B-bomb site. Well, that's maybe the worst place to go versus DCZs. Sub Rosa has one of them. Cutler has a P250. Smoke, that smoke is actually quite nice though. At the end of the balcony, and you can see Mir's gonna go forward by himself. Dangerous, dangerous ah. stuff. Sub Rosa picks up the kill. That's an AK, oh, the spray, it's good. Finds itself Hut G in the apartments, and now the bomb is in middle, and no one is lost for CLG. Only Sabrosa has Kevlar, but still, with one AWP and two AKs, that, that AWP makes, it's not as maneuverable, not as dynamic, and with this kind of situation, you want the ability to move fairly quickly, and right now they are stuck in mid, and the AWP JR, he even has the bomb on him, which actually makes a lot of sense, as you want your riflers to be able to fire off more in a situation like this. Interesting start from Vega Squadron, walking through a smoke with, on your own with an AK on an anti-eco round. See if they can recover from this one. Two players on the B bomb site. They're running out of time as well. There's a bomb dropped, which means the CT is going to be on the full rotation. That AK is going to make its way towards uh, CT of A. How do you get the bomb down, Vega Squadron? You've got uh, no map control at the moment. That Molotov, will it force Ethan out? It will, but he can hide behind default. And he's got his teammate around Shadow as well, so he can just bait for his teammate. There's no time for Vega to uh, mess around with grenades here. And that is uh, just a calamity of a round. It's a mess. Yeah, as you say, this move here, just you know, walking through the smoke into the truck. You're really running the, the di well, rolling the dice there. It did not go too well for Vega Squadron. They're against guns again, though, and they themselves have enough to purchase their own guns. But again, the question lies, does CLG want to just sit and wait for them and play fairly passively, or do they want to go close and aggressive? And 
Same for JR. He looks like he's going to go for that peek into B. Kusta looking for a player in mid. Is Mir going to go for the classic run through the short smoke? Looks like he might be. Just creeping. These guys like going for their smokes, but look at the position that's given him. The gamble's paid off, but Kusta, oh, he's moved out of position just at the wrong time. Mir, is he going to go into CPL? That's a huge frag very early on, but in the meantime, there you go Hachi and Chopper. So again, Vega lose two players early, but Mir just continues to charge, fragging all over the place for his team. Exit CPL, which way will they go though? Kachanda in connector. Smoke soon disappearing. Subroza on his own towards B. Will he peek the balcony? There's a smoke on the balcony of B for the time being. Kachanda may be looking to cut off rotation should it come in from A later on. But they, he needs his teammates to be successful here towards B. Yeah, they must. So it lies with Sabrosa to ruin their day. His support is so, so incredibly far away that it does get quite nerve-wracking for him. Will they check this? He's going to spot a helmet very soon. There it is, finds it. Does he realize there's another one in the apartments? Now he knows. Mir goes to the engagement. Instant headshot from Sabrosa, and that is the round done. I don't think there's even time to recover the bomb for Kashanda. Vega Squadron are going to concede this one, I think, and their money is ruined. Yeah, this is... Uh, hasn't turned out so well for Vega Squadron. I think the desk did suggest that maybe the T round would be iffy and uh, it's hard to, di to disagree at the moment. Eco round coming in for the Vega squadron side. Still in high, well, still in high spirits, our CLG, as they uh, catch up to the score of Vega squadron. Again, that play needed to, if they get a pick there, then they're in a very good stead to win the round with the uh, lurker and connector. On this occasion, though, doesn't pay off. JR with two flashes and a smoke. Kashanda with a flashbang as well. So it seems this is Operation Plant the Bomb. Now, JR could deploy that smoke grenade between uh, triple and default and uh, throw a, a flash towards jungle to try and get into that smoke to plant the bomb. Although from that angle, it could also go behind triple. Oh... Has that, has that landed short? Oh, no. I'm not sure if that went where we're supposed to, but not Ethan's here to clean the house. Yeah, it scraped the, scraped the ceiling, and I feel like it was probably supposed to bounce off uh, the triple box there, so that's an error. Pause has been called. Okay, I'm told there's going to be a round replay, so I guess there was some kind of technical failure. Okay, one of the Vega players dropped, I assume, before any kills came in. So the round is going to be replayed. That's always annoying for a CLG. I mean, they had quite the, the wipeout there of Vegas Squadron as they moved in. It's always going to be a good round to win. And they do really seem to be on the other. It does seem a bit more sure, a bit more confident from them on the CT side. And Vegas Squadron, they have to, in some of these rounds, if they don't have the strategies, they have to be able to sh outshoot CLG. And... CLG, I don't know that they're gonna that that's gonna be a possibility. I guess we'll see as things develop, but so far I like what I'm seeing out of CLG. You know, Sabros has been doing some good work towards the B bomb side. And CLG have been they have they've often been giving up middle as well. I mean Kusta will try to play around it a little bit with the AWP, see if he can get something cheeky in, but he doesn't seem to be overcommitting. And so gen generally CLG are playing it pretty by the book and passively. And honestly, with some of the players we've seen out of the Vegas squadron guys, when they've been in advantage, let's say that round where Mir walked through the smoke on B, all CLG have to do is give Vegas squadron the rope to hang themselves with. Yeah, just allowing them to make more errors and capitalize on those errors. So yeah, Vegas squadron not, not really efficiently uh, using their advantages. And those advantages have now gone. And who knows if they will come back in this half. Time will tell. We're waiting for this round to be restored at the moment. So we'll see if uh, Vegas Quadrant will run the same strat. So yeah, from from that similar angle, you, you can throw the smoke over towards triple, but you need to uh, move forward with it a bit to give it enough trajectory. And indeed, we are live. Awkward, though, for Vegas Quadrant in that uh, now they have to take a different approach, but I'm convinced that smoke was messed up. So maybe it's a blessing in disguise.
No grenades being bought on this occasion, so an entirely different approach from Vega Squadron. I like that shot of the CRG coach there, by the way, for, for a moment when we got to see the, uh, the notes. Ooh, just look at these anti-eco frags. Don't we love these? They're spectacular, Dan. They're scintillating. Oh, scintillation is no more. 11 to 11, and CLG will be up against the buy. Vega Squadron having 5k rounds abouts for pretty much everybody, so they're going to have comfort getting the AKs in full utility in. And so uh, this is one of the more, I think this will be one of the more telling rounds because in this round 23, it's uh, going to be a situation whereby Vega Squadron need to show a strong default or in a strong ability to take map control, I feel, because I don't think that we've been seeing much from their picking based gameplay. And it does look actually like they're going to go with a set piece onto the A bomb site instead. So let's see how that fares. Hayes and Ethan are charging through mid, so if Vegas watching her fast enough, maybe they can pull something off. Miz have uh, been forced to move back, but also he can be the bait for the time being. He'll be more than a bait. Nice headshot onto Hayes. Ethan now in connector as these D's start to stream in. Kusa still got a nice angle towards Palace, but on the low ground is a blind chopper. Kusa now trapped around uh, triple. There he goes. And indeed, all the frags coming in for Vegas watching at the moment, but CT still in control of Cutler. Yeah, Cutler with another frag, and Ethan's just moving around the smoke here by Sandwich. Spots two, spray comes in. That's the bomb down. And that leaves Mir with 11 points of health. How's he here? And uh, Cutler has no idea. But the bomb is down indeed. There's a minute to play with. Both of these players are so low that this is a first bullet wins type of situation. And Ethan's coming in from Palace. I think Ethan's got a great position here. Will Mir be able to anticipate this? That's the question. He is searching everywhere because he has absolutely no idea. Oh, I think he spotted a pixel there. And I don't know. I don't know if Ethan realizes. It looks like he did. Here comes the peak. Oh, nicely done by me. That was beautiful. Four kills for him in this round. What a save. How on earth did Mir get there in the first place? I thought Ethan had crushed the round with this push through the smoke into Sandwich. And you see Mir, he's just having a jolly in CT spawn. But he kills Cutler there instantly. And I think some different players in that situation, because Cutler's just not expecting him to be there, uh, would have moved up behind him to try and get two frags. At the same time, I'll figure out where the other guy was. Either way, Mir takes it over the line. He has been uh, playing very well for his team on 30 kills at the moment, leading uh, both teams on the scoreboard at present. CLG, though, still on the buy. Two UMPs now for Vega Squadron, so despite winning the round, they will have an inferior buy. Vega Squadron with two players towards A, and the bomb's still in T spawn. It would suggest they'll go towards A a bit later on. Chopper holding close in Palace with the... Uh, UMP. Mega Squadron, got to be careful. They've had really bad uh, success, even just harassing through smoke. They've been killed multiple times, and it's probably cost them rounds. So they made me a bit worried about that. They've got Ethan rotating towards A through CT spawn. So there's a three man hold now for CLG and A. It does feel as though Vega Squadron do want to go for the play into A. They've got three players in mid, which allows them to use those players to just pressure, use grenades, get someone into connector, or even all three players into connector. But the issue is that someone has to go back for the bomb. That's actually going to be JR with the AK. So two players in connector, ready to split onto the A bomb site. Bomb collected now by Vega Squadron as they move in for the play. But Hayes, he spots one. Mir going straight over the top. Nicely done from Hayes. A triple for him. Can it be more? Yes, it will. An easy quad kill. And that is a very smart way to win a round. What a sexy beast. Nice confidence for Hayes as well. Tying the score again. Easy for Hayes. This is the uh, commonly known amongst players as the get right position. Uh, an off angle towards CT spawn. Often you're going to be pre-firing around the toll booth area. Pays off very, very well for Hayes indeed. And that, that ruins the money of Vega Squadron. He straight up took money out of their pockets. Left them with nothing but knives and lint. Vega Squadron on the eco once more. One flashbang onto JR. So again, it's, uh, I think it's a play to plant the bomb. But Mir's top mid. Chopper's making his way towards A. So this won't be a fast round from Vega. Because so the Guardian of Middle, so far Middle is not to be tested. Mer looking to go for it though, actually gets a tag in, but the rest of his teammates are mostly moving with the bomb towards the palace, oh sorry, the apartments, the B apartments. 
It's unclear whether they want to go through underpass just yet, whether they want to go onto the B bomb site, but whichever route they choose, it is laden with terrors. Terrors in the form of Cutler, Fire, and Sabrosa. Mir coming in though, finds himself back. Where's the frag? Oh, that is a very big shame. That's a bad miss. Nothing done with the P250. Kashanda waiting for somebody to overextend, hiding there with the bomb. With his main chopper in short. That's the time for Kashanda to push, but he can't do anything with it in that round. Nothing doing for Vega Squadron. Great round for CLG. Some trivia the Mir Space Station, I think, opened for business in 1986 and then closed in 1991. That's not a lot of time. As far as space stations go, or is it? I don't know. Send me a tweet if you're a nerd. I looked that up, by the way. I don't just have that rolling off to the top of my head. That would be insane. Vega Squadron on pistols now, and CLG, this is a huge opportunity for them to uh, to may maybe get too, too close to 16 to be stopped by the squadron. Nice push there, two-man push, support for the right for the uh, sniper. JR perhaps spotted towards oh, man. one by one. Vega Squadron get cut down, cut to pieces, cut to shreds. Um, very easy look. A lot of these individual challenges just not panning out, and uh, it'll all be over soon. It'll all be over soon. Or at least that's how it's supposed to go. PT50 and a Deagle. It's moving around, trying to get some damage in there, which is good because COG's money is not perfect, but it is starting to get a little out of hand. As you can see, it's uh, yeah, starting to look, it's, it's shaping up nicely. That is for sure. And despite Miz's crazy big effort with the 30 kills that he's on, it indeed has been a labored situation for Vega Squadron. I don't think he's gotten a kill in four rounds. Because I think the last time we pointed out that he was fragging heavily, I think he was 13 and 15, so... Yeah, it was a while ago. He could plant in default, although there's no way for him to know that. But with this kind of peaking, he's probably going to die to Kusta. This is a slow death down. There's only so much you can do, isn't there? There's only so much you can do. You have to admire how thorough he is, though. Yeah. He's literally checking everything. There he is. Run, 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 run. Now he can plant the bomb. Now it's time to plant the bomb. Boom. There we go. Oh, he's even faking. He's faking. He's got 10 seconds. Plant it. Plant it. Plant it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got the plant down. Right he got the plant down. He's doing some Michael Jackson. Style, style points. We'll give him style points, Dan. Well, I mean, he got the bomb down there. That's that's pretty nice. Like, he was able to shoulder peek the angle, the one angle that they had on him, and then get to the bomb plant. Look at that. He is uh, spinning like a spinning top. I guess Best he I could do, I'm sorry. I guess he must have like a bind that changes sensitivity and it's allowed a lot, to a lot of people have that, yeah. Why? So because you know, it was if you're sometimes it's hard to uh if you're planting the bomb, it can be hard to shoot the guy in the head, right? Historically. So people would uh, have a super high sense just to, sp just, just to spin around while they're planting the bomb to make it hard for them to get, be killed. Anyway, two rounds away, RCLG. Vega Squadron back on the bike, creeping through the smoke once again. Nobody in CPL, maybe just assuming it's going to get smoked off. And Mir will capitalize on that, finally getting back on the scoreboard. They have to do more work than that. They have to close the advantage down. It's not as easy as it looks for some teams. Or as it sounds, rather. The question is whether COG will decide to just wait or go aggressive. Waiting can work too. Again, against a, a T side or Mirage, if the T side is not super comfortable playing Mirage, there can be all sorts of openings that they can give up. Ooh, one on one taken against Cutler. He's good for it. That will even the situation. And now we've got Kusta in a spot where he's got multiple incoming assailants. He's got connected to worry about, he's got window to worry about. Will he turn his attention back to window? Will he realize that? Oh, no scope comes in. That's a nice look for Kusta. He's going to back away now, and that is fantastic because he's put his team in a four versus three, and the clock is against Vega Squadron. They have to move. But they can split the B bomb site now. Hutchie moving towards CPL. Kusta and Hayes completely out of position. Hutchie gets a nice pick there, and he's choosing to run distraction towards A, but Vega Squadron, they think A is clear. They don't realize Kusta's there. Now they're rotating towards the A bomb site. Cutler, here's the rotation. He's going to start making his way towards short, so this bomb may get picked off. It's not facing, though. 
Kusa can run distraction in the meantime now, but JR's there to trade. How does the bomb go down? They can't plant it for short, that's for sure. They've got 13 seconds with which to plant the bomb. They're planting it for short anyway, why not? There it is, opened up. Vega will make his, uh, JR will make his way towards uh, T-Ramp, Cutler and Sub Rosa from Jungle and Connector. Chopper's really low. Cutler does have an incendiary. Let's see where he tries to use that one. The funny thing is that the firebox spot is almost too predictable. You don't want to waste an incendiary on it, maybe at this point. Will it actually work out? Is everyone going to check it? No! Chopper gets a quick kill there. Now Cutler knows where both players are, but he's stuck between both of their crosshairs and he will go down 14 to 12. Vega Squadron. It's 14 to 13. At 40 to 13, sorry, my mistake. And Vega Squadron sending the message that this is far from over just yet. On the plus side for CLG, they've got tons of money in the bank, so they will have no issue buying again and again if necessary. Going down to the wire, but will anybody have nerves as we get closer to around 16 for one of these two teams? Again, the bomb left in T-spawn. This time, only one lurker towards the A-side. That's the difference for Vega Squadron. Mir not going to be creeping through the smoke this time, but he's conditioned Kusa to stay uh, in CPO and be entertained. So Brosa picked off very early indeed. JR, he's been looking for his picks towards the balcony of B for a, lot, a number of rounds, and this time he gets it. He's been aiming as well for the jump, so I can only assume that Sabrosa went for the jump peak and got punished for it. Counter grenades from the CTs into middle. As CLG try to feel out this aggression. And the push for into T-spawn is a huge amount of information. Wow, that is quite the hero play coming in from Hazed. He's going to find an engagement and he's going to go down against Chopper. That is a sad shame for him. Ethan, however, able to hold on to the window room for the time being. Realizes the presence is by connector. In they go, though. Two players stuck in, in jungle. Nice flash comes in. Kusta there for the cover. And Ethan might not be dead just yet. Kusta still lurking around. Ethan will be lost, but the damage has been done. It slowed the push of Vega Squadron. However, they are now free for the plant. Yeah, they've got mad map control now. JR planting the bomb default. Kishanda in connector, Chopper's in CT, and he's going further. He's looking to flank, and his teammate might just need to help. Kusa going for a flashbang, but that will be easily avoided. Nice split play with Cutler as well, but they don't see Kishanda there because JR gets the first pick, and surely they will trade. Indeed, they will, 14 to 14. Again, CLG have some money to go for another buy, but after that, the well is going to be dry. Yeah, this just got re very interesting, actually. You know, Vegas Squad is showing that they're able to get these players in place on middle and to trade successfully in a lot of spots and to boil it down to a lot of chaos, actually. You know, is this guy, there's like multiple places that a guy knows the T's are coming from. Does he go right? Does he go left? What timings does he choose? You know, the chaos has uh, influenced some of these engagements and it's gone positively here for Vegas Squadron. Looking for the pick. Kusta trying to get himself up onto the bench. Wow, look how fast the teammates are to connect a very fast pace here. Kusta flashed, caught it out in the open. Great pacing here for Vega Squadron. All they have to do is get the kills. Kusta cannot miss these shots. He can't be missing these shots. And Mir will take him down. If CLG lose this round, it might just be GG's. Mir in jungle, Cutler's in connector. He can run distraction once Ambrosa comes in, but he can't get the frag. That leaves Cutler alone with $150 in the bank. Ethan's the only man with any cash. This is disaster territory for CLG, and Cutler may feel compelled to do this. Between smokes, that flash will tell everybody where he is. Can he get any frags though? No. Massive gamble there. Not going to pay off. Mirror in the right position. Match point, Vega Squadron. Are they going to do this? Are they going to do this? Vega Squadron, again, showing another good round. And one thing that was great about that round was just that they changed the pacing up so heavily and you can see the effect of that change of pace. Chris is thinking, okay, I'm smoked out of window. Oh no, rather he, he got uh, pressured out of window almost immediately. So, okay, I, got, I have time to go to the connector. Oh my God, they're already there. I don't have anywhere to go. I just got flashed. I'm in the open. Ethan has exactly, there's a tactical timeout here from CLG. Ethan has the money from AWP and he's bought that. Now he's got zero dollars in the bank. He's been thrown a deagle kusta has gone uh, full by, basically. He's taken the AWP, got his grenades, so on and so forth. He has a spawn towards the A bomb site, and he's going to be the man to watch because everybody else is on pistols here on the CT side. So Kusta, he can go towards Connector. He can go towards Palace. That might be a too risky a play in this, in this situation, though. He can go towards Connector, but have a peek towards Ramp. 
he's going to be the man to uh, to get the frags and rotate. Vega Squadron might not be the best team on an anti-eco or anti-force buy situation. Actually, Kusta's pushing the ramp of AWP. We need to get eyes on Kusta. There's no one there for the time being on the T side. In fact, they've gone three people towards uh, top mid. So what does Kusta do now? It's uh, an interesting question. Vega Squadron, they've slowed their pace down dramatically, perhaps expecting some aggression themselves in middle, but it's not to be. And they are deciding to hold. They themselves looking to give the rope to CLG. As time goes on, maybe some desperation will start to set in as CLG have very poor weaponry to work with. The pressure falls onto them to make aggressive plays, but so far they are holding. And they are sort of trying to anchor around Kusta as he does have the AWP. Kusta has gone back to CT, so he's got the ability to rotate between a lot of positions. But here comes Vegas Squadron into shot. That is a faster entry frag. And now big problems for CLG. Lovely Molotov as well, Sabrosa. So you are on fire. Kusta's in the angle, but is it too late? He needs to get a second frag. Lovely jump there. Kusta, with a jump of his own, manages to escape for the time being, but they know where he is, and they can apply the relevant pressure. Loads of flashbacks, Molotovs. They've got a smoke on JR as well. Kishana coming in for the flank, but a 180 from Kusta. He's still alive. It's a three versus three. What a sick spin there from Kusta. Under pressure, he's got himself two kills, but they're all stuck in shop at the moment. There is actually Ethan making his way around the side, but he will be eliminated. Hutchi with the position, with the superior battling skills in that instance. And now it falls on Kusta, one versus three, stuck in the window, no health. And CLG going down against Vega Squadron. That is a massive pickup for Vega Squadron. And I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit surprised, but not completely surprised, James, because again, you never know what to expect from these teams. 35 kills for Mir and his team take it over the line. You have to feel for CLG in that last round. They made the power play of the AWP, but there was nobody there. He was forced into a pass position going back towards CT on A, and then it just, it was too late when uh, they moved into the B bomb site from short. So that is Vega Squadron taking their first match. Maybe a surprise to some since they're a lesser known team, a lesser known name, but indeed they start off well. The desk will see you after the break.